Hello! Welcome to part four of my private religious schooling series. I figured I'd dedicate an episode to the subject of financial solicitation of students and families to expand upon some things mentioned in my previous episodes and my recent diary video. If you haven't seen my latest diary video, it talks about how the school decided concern with animal treatment was anti-masculine, and combined with lack of interest in attending Christian events, can be considered evidence a student might be a homosexual. So I'd like to expand a bit on the financial aspect of this, on what Christian events and true Christian and Christ-like behavior can be defined as. Some religious schools may include clauses such as only allowing Christians to attend or requiring Christ-like behavior to attend or graduate, and a parent sending their child to such a school is often very religious and not going to apply much scrutiny to what those can mean. They may think, ah, well, I'm a good Christian, I want my child raised by Christian standards, and the image they have in their head of what that means is their personal definition, and they may be unaware the school has a different interpretation. Requiring students embody Christ-like behavior is a malleable standard. Required Christ-like behavior can mean whatever the school wants it to mean, including financially. After all, a true Christian would only be all too happy to attend fundraisers and make generous donations to the school. When I was in school, and I talked about this in my previous diary video, I couldn't come to a lot of fundraisers or financial events. My grandmother was not in good health, and we were too poor to afford quality care for her, so when I wasn't at school, I usually needed to be at home to take care of her. I couldn't come to fundraisers, much less offer them my patronage for my family's meager funds. However, this can be considered a lack of interest in attending Christian events and displaying Christian conduct. Accordingly, it may be evidence of anti-Christian sentiments. Why would a Christian boy take care of a sick family member when he can instead attend a Christian event and display Christian conduct with his donations? Don't you trust God with your health? Don't you trust God with the health of your family? A true Christian isn't a doubting Thomas. This narrative, combined with frowning on the math teacher's cat torture habits, made a compelling case for me possibly being a homosexual and resulted in substantial ridicule. Again, this is discussed further in my recent diary video, which I'll link in the description. My point is, not being generous enough towards the school with financial donations can be considered a lack of Christian conduct. Being unwilling or unable to financially demonstrate that you are a true Christian can contribute to a case against you. This can place you in violation of Christian behavior mandates that the school requires until such time as you demonstrate Christian conduct. And I have something special to show you today. I wanted to look over a few local religious schools to see if any had hidden fees or mandatory donations, in addition to normal tuition fees and the like, that would be similar to what I had experienced. Now, there are a lot of different ways money or monetary value can be solicited. For example, one I was subjected to was mandatory service hours to make up for the school's lack of custodial staff. So I figured it'd take me some time to collect information on a school doing something like this in 2016, potentially several weeks. It actually took several minutes. I found one on the first try. All sources will be linked in the description box down below for perusal at your leisure. This is greatschools.org. There is a local school called Monterey Bay Christian School, with 4 out of 5 stars overall rating. Reviews are polarizing, being either 4 or 5 stars or 1 star, most being 4 or 5. The third review listed puts forward a claim about poor teacher credentials and several financial shenanigans. The boldest is a parent point system requiring mandatory labor or donations that wasn't disclosed until after registration. That's quite the accusation. I went to the school's website and there's no mention of a parent point program on or in the tuition and fees page, nor is it mentioned anywhere in the processes and forms page or any of the registration and sign-up paperwork at all as of March 5th, 2016. It is, however, in the parent-student handbook. The only references to the parent-student handbook related to finance are in regard to the delinquent payment section. The parent point program is a small note on page 14 of the parent-student handbook PDF, which is not cited or referred to in any of the tuition, fees, or registration documents as of March 5th, 2016. And the parent-student handbook is vague about what participation means. Instead, you're referred to a family point sheet, which doesn't actually exist on the website as of March 5th, 2016. You have to pick up a physical copy from their office. It appears to be this document. There are many volunteer opportunities and school projects throughout the year, such as fundraisers, banquets, etc. Below are examples. 
Most of these have a conversion rate below minimum wage, equating to around $5 an hour or less. The best conversion rate is financial donations, and there is a mandatory value of $250 for a two-parent family and $125 for a single parent. Any unearned parent points at the end of the year are added to the family account, and the handbook has the delinquent accounts section. And when I went to pick up this form, I also received this. A solicitation for a fundraiser. What else? $65 a ticket. The theme is GEMS. Guiding and Empowering Model Students. For God, tacked onto there at the end. Lovely. Let's refer back to the review page for a moment. The first review someone would see is a five-star review praising the school. It even recommends it as a good experience for someone that isn't a Christian. In fact, the school is so accepting of non-Christians, symbols of non-Christian religions are prohibited. Isn't that nice? Let's see what all these mandatory donations pay for. Monterey Bay Christian School cannot meet the educational needs of all children. We do not have a special education program. MBCS is not equipped to meet the needs of delinquent and or emotionally unstable children. We do not provide remediation for students who have missed an area or concept in their education, such as an IEP, or any type of modification to their educational plan. Some children do not adjust to a disciplined academic and administrative structure. In such cases, the school reserves the right of full discretion in any discipline administered in accordance with the discipline policy policy adapted by the governing board. Students may be put on behavioral or academic probation for a reasonable corrective period of time. If this probation period does not produce the desired change in behavior, the student will be dismissed from our school. Any excessive violation of school rules or policy will result in immediate dismissal. But hey, at least the school's mission statement promises to teach every subject from a Christian perspective, and at least you have good Christian conduct to look forward to that is surely a match to your personal standards of Christian. After all, MBCS does not permit students to smoke, drink alcoholic beverages, or use illegal drugs, violence, or weapons. If a student is found to be involved in, or talking or writing about involvement in any of the above on or off campus, a suspension or expulsion will result. Surely, this kind of speech control perfectly represents the Christ-like environment you want enforced on your child, right? The school also doesn't have a nurse, and this brings up what I call the maid fallacy. If you were a parent looking for reviews, most of the ones you'd see about this school have recommendations that are favorable, and if you don't subscribe to either a Christian foundation or not the correct definition of a Christian foundation in close enough alignment to the school, you may be misinformed. A common error I see among parents sending their children to a religious school is the maid fallacy. They believe because they have faith, that's the limit to what's required. Other responsibilities they should be doing, they don't need to do because the work's been outsourced. The parent doesn't need to research how non-Christian students are handled, obviously they're handled well, because it's a Christian school. So obviously, the answer is their personal definition of whatever well happens to be, and they can make a recommendation based on that. They don't need to read the parent-student handbook to discover hidden fees or mandatory donations. It's a Christian school. Obviously, such a thing would not occur. Or, obviously, it's a great idea blessed by God. The school was a gift from God. They neglect their parental responsibilities because they believe their deity will arrange for things to be favorable. The maid will clean up the mess. None of these people would say they believe their deity is a maid or butler. They worship this deity, but they act under the expectation the deity is going to clean up after their chronic negligence. Why read the fine print on all the rules? The Christian school is obviously part of God's plan, and if he didn't want you to send your child there, he would have given you a sign. There's no need to scrutinize. God's got that handled. You have faith. That's all that's important, not personal or parental responsibility. Have faith the maid will clean things up. Isn't that convenient? Even when I was still a Christian, I found it strange faith was so often used to rationalize corner-cutting. Perhaps you too have witnessed the maid fallacy in action. But I'm digressing. Back on topic. This particular school has mandatory donations and or mandatory labor at a below minimum wage conversion rate, the disclosure of which is withheld from the tuition and fees page. Unless someone reads the parent-student handbook, they will not be aware of these fees. Or at least that is the case as of March 5th, 2016. Perhaps this will change at a future date, but I found the parent-student handbook rather troubling. After all, the money's added to the account, and as is stated in the delinquent account section, on the fifth school day after 30 days of missed payments, a sealed letter will be sent home with the student or students notifying the parents that the student will not be allowed to attend the following day. Because tuition and donations can't buy a proofread. I'll see you next time. Later, YouTube.